Get in, kids, we're doing science. Can you imagine if I just like squirted it in my eye? It's good content. Yeah, that is straight up a hole. 15 minute grab, put Drano on your knife, pit it profit. Last year I made a video and I tried out a couple of my favorite different patina methods and that video did really well. And we got a whole lot of comments of people saying like, why don't you try this? I like to do this on my knife. Uh, some crazy ones that was like, this might be fun. You should try this. So I'm going to do that. For the uninitiated, a patina is just the good kind of oxidization on your knife. So it's a little bit like rust, except it will actually keep your knife from rusting. It's what you want on your knife and it kind of makes some funky colors and keeps your knife cutting well. For the most part, it develops totally naturally, but for people that are having issues with their knife rusting, or if you just want to try something fun, you can also force a patina, which is what we're doing today. So I've got 10 beautiful Munatoshi Santokus here in front of me. So this is a beautiful and super affordable carbon steel knife for anybody that's looking to get into something a little bit more handmade. I believe these guys are 215 small Canadian dollars and it's a really great place to start if you're getting into Japanese knives. So last time we did this video, we used the Kurochi Forge knives, which just means they had a little bit of blacksmith finish left on the knife. This can change your Kurochi finish. So the awesome thing about the Munatoshis is that it's a completely clean slate and our patina should hopefully show up really well. For safety purposes, I am gonna be wearing gloves for this whole video. We're gonna wrap the handles to make sure nothing funky gets on them. Because these are fully carbon steel blades, they do come with a little bit of blade oil on them. And to get a good patina, I wanna make sure that I'm removing that completely. So I'm gonna start by using a little bit of paint thinner, but you can also use acetone or just a really good scrub down with soap and water works if you're just at home too. Uh, but just to get the cleanest finish I can, I'm using paint thinner today and then I'm gonna wash them really well when I'm done. Just reeks of paint thinner. Yeah. <laughs> so the first method is tried and true, knife work classic. It's just the instant coffee method in which you brew a gigantic, disgusting pot of uber strong instant coffee and you leave your knife in it for a period of time. I think on that blog we said it's between like six and 24 hours. We had a commenter actually try it out and said that they left it in for eight hours, but it didn't do much. And then they left it in for like 24 to 36 hours and then it was really dark. All right, so I'm doing two big old scoops of instant coffee in here. I'm gonna let it dissolve first, put the knife in and then I'm going to top it up a little bit if we need any more room. All right, here we go. Now, obviously when you're doing this, you want to do it as gently as possible. So last time we tried this, we made coffee in our regular pot and Mason got really mad at us for using all the coffee. So we're using instant coffee because there's less oil and it makes our coworkers less mad. All right, we're gonna set this aside for 24 hours. All right, so it's been 24 hours for the coffee patina and we're gonna see how it looks. There you have it the 24 hour coffee patina. This is usually one of the more even ones that we do and I still think it's probably gonna win the challenge this time around. Simple enough to do at home, you're good to go. Our next method is basically the same thing but with Coca-Cola for a little bit less time. So this one comes from Maine Microfishing 4960. Uh, he tried an outdoor sportsman in Coca-Cola for an hour to try to get the rust off and apparently it left a nice patina. Now again, I'm gonna put a little bit of beeswax on just the collar of this handle to try to keep as much gunk from getting in there as possible. I don't think I need gloves for this one. I think I'm probably okay. If you're not gonna use gloves, do be careful touching the bare carbon steel because you can leave fingerprints that'll make a patina before you can even get to it, so. 150 calories per 375 milliliters sounds like not as much as I thought it would be. <laughs> it does have 41 grams of sugar in it though. <laughs> I don't think the carbonation is gonna be important for how this patina is. All right, we'll check back on this guy in an hour. Hey Google, start timer for one hour. Hey Google, start timer for <laughs> one hour. Okay, it's been an hour for the Coca-Cola. And I don't think there were any special instructions for this. I'm pretty sure it was just take it out, wipe it off. Ooh. This smells crazy. <laughs> kind of smells like garlic. It does kind of smell, like, smell like, like garlic. Check that out, getting darker by the second too. Still a couple of spots. Cool, Coca-Cola works. Looks like I got like splattered by an oil or something. I don't, 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 Nathan. <laughs> you know what it tastes like in Coca-Cola. Metallic Coke? Yep. That's disgusting. We invented a new flavor of Coke. You learned nothing by doing that. <laughs> Next up is boiling vinegar. So we did do vinegar that had been boiled in the last video, but we have 
a couple people that did a couple different things. Hot vinegar just under a boil, shake often, remove white, re-dip. So I think we leave this boiling, we dip it, check it, wipe it off, and then dip it again. They also mentioned you can cut a lemon if you want after stropping, but I think I'm just gonna do the vinegar to start with. Smells like vinegar. All right, now I'm just gonna turn my hot plate on and wait for it to boil. All right, so the vinegar is hot. It is just about at a simmer. So we're gonna start doing our dips and kind of pay attention as we're going. They did specify just under a boil, so maybe we'll take it off the heat for a second as needed. So I'm not sure how long I'm supposed to leave this in here. Shake it around. The instructions did say to shake frequently, so I assume to knock off the bubbles and just kind of keep everything moving. Also maybe because the patina will happen once the air hits it and not necessarily in an anaerobic environment. The magic with boiled vinegar really happens as a result of the heat and the acid that falls off of it because as the air hits it, that's when the patina happens. So pretty dramatic already. I'm gonna do a couple more dips and see how it goes. I am getting some crazy colors on here. Turns out when you dip metal in boiling water, it's actually pretty hot. So this is after three dips. We're actually getting a lot of interesting colors here. I'm getting a lot of blues and browns and I'm getting a little bit different results, kind of right near the tang where the handle goes in. And it's a little bit more on the brown side there, which is probably because it had more exposure to oxygen when it was being dipped. One more dip, one more dip. Check out the colors on the white. So here is after four dips. This one has a lot of blue showing. This turned out really, really nicely. I think that's a good kind of speed cheat to the just letting it sit in vinegar for a while. And also because you can kind of control how it looks and let it dry as it's coming out. Even the wipes kind of form a different bit of the patina. This one's cool. This one's approved. I like that. I'm pretty happy with where this knife is. So for now, I'm just gonna put it down and as it cools off, I think the patina will continue to darken a little bit. Uh, but I really like the look, so I'm gonna leave it. I'm gonna call this one done. So this one's a little bit out there, but meat patinas are a thing and they do tend to look pretty nice. They're kind of on the blue side normally. So we're gonna try out one from Oracle OCP, who uses a hybrid method, he calls it. So cheap steak, cook it hot, and then slice it like a bagel. Uh, so like kind of butterfly it, hang it out in there for a little bit and then leave the juice on the blade for a few minutes and then wash with the hottest water you can find. Uh, he also notes very importantly that you should be feeding this to your dog afterwards. So I will. This is a really good example of how different foods can have a vastly different effect on the outcome of your patina. Uh, I have only the best steak for this. It's a beef inside round cut from Canadian Superstore. Quick shout out to the King Tongs that we've got. When these first came in, I didn't have a lot of faith, but now I pick them up for pretty much everything in my kitchen, whether that's flipping steaks, getting pickles out of jars, making fun noises, handling meat when you can't stand touching it. We got quite a few different people recommending cooked meat or raw meat, sometimes a combination of both. Uh, we just decided to do one today, but if you have strong feelings about one versus the other, maybe we can try the other way in the next one. I'm not ready. Okay. <laughs> All right. There we go. I'm gonna rest it for just a little bit, not too much. I don't know if I wanna fully rest it because we want some of the juices to be moving around, but not too much. Delicious, an unseasoned steak for my dog. I love these videos because it's just the definition of play with your food. <laughs> now we're just gonna let it hang out for a second. And I'm gonna pack this up for my dog. So I've definitely got juices on the blade, but I'm not sure how much is on there. So I'm just gonna use a pastry brush and put a little bit more on. Give it a re-dip, if you will. It's really just arts and crafts with your knives. All right, so I just washed this under super hot water and indeed it did turn super blue. So here's side one. You can see really distinctive blue right in the middle. Side two, really pretty. This is gonna look really dramatic over the course of many steaks and many good meals. But for starters, pretty cool. So the bacon method is super popular online and in our comments. We've gotten a whole bunch of 
people who have asked us to do this one. Dame Inspector has been asking us to do this for years. Admiral Longstash also wanted us to use ham, but I think this is kind of the same vibe. We've got salt, we've got meat, so we're just gonna start with bacon and uh, see how it goes. Essentially, this method is just cut bacon and don't wash your knife for a bit, which is pretty similar to what you'd be doing in any regular kitchen. This is super not a long enough knife for this, but we're gonna make it work. All right, we're just gonna let it sit for a while. Okay, so I'm gonna give bacon one more shot just because there is a lot more fat in bacon. I don't think we got as dramatic as a result as we could have. Uh, so I'm gonna just go in. I'm not gonna try to actually dice it up this time. I'm just gonna leave the blade in the meatiest bits and try to avoid some of the fat. And hopefully we get a little bit better result, but let's find out. So this was round two with bacon and the results are still pretty underwhelming. I think, uh, like I mentioned before, the name of the game a lot of the time is just getting minimal fat on there. You really just want the meat juices or the acid to make a good patina. Maybe we used the wrong kind of bacon. Maybe it was the maple flavoring. Maybe we needed a little bit more high quality or less fat percentage, but this will patina your knife over time. Just maybe not if you're looking to force a patina right away. This one is Definitely the most dangerous of the ones that I'm doing today. I'm gonna to be acid etching a knife in ferric chloride, um, which is a super acidic corrosive liquid, essentially. This is not something I super recommend doing at home, and the reason that we're doing it today is because one of our regular viewers, Blank Blank, who is a knife maker, has been etching knives with ferric chloride for a while. And it's also something that we do at our stores normally with Damascus knives that have been thinned out, just to kind of bring back that original look. But it's also a way to essentially force a really quick patina. So we're gonna dip a knife and it'll work very quickly. And then I'll be neutralizing with Windex once I'm all done and once I'm happy with how dark everything looks. Uh, this is also super corrosive, like I mentioned. So for safety, I'm wearing extra glasses and I've got my gloves. Okay. When you're short, it's important not to be able to see the corrosive acid that you're dipping things into. So because this is so insanely acidic, this process happens pretty quickly, like within the span of seconds. You can see the acid there, super yellow. You can already see the line. And you really start seeing that change once you've removed it from the acid. Because like all of these solutions, the patina actually happens once it's also been exposed to the air. Little swish. Awesome, I can see my core steel is looking really, really dark. Let's see if I can get just a little bit further in. Cool. I think I like about where that's looking. So the Windex neutralizes the acid and turns it essentially into water. From here, I'm just gonna wash it off with regular soap and water and then my work here is done. All right, so now I've cleaned this off with soap and water and you can see just how dark, particularly the core steel got. Looks a little bit inconsistent or a little on the blotchy side on the back bevel. And I think that might just be because I sprayed it with Windex once and then I did another round uh, when we needed a little bit more footage. But honestly, it's kind of cool. It's like piebald knife. We're back in food territory, so I'm taking the gloves off for now. This one comes from our regular customer and super fan, Gord, who sends us many ideas on daily. This one was salsa, salsa patina. No elaboration, just salsa on a knife. So that's what we're gonna do. I hope you're happy. All for you, Gord. All for you, buddy. Thanks for being a watcher. Your dinner is ready. So I don't think this really did a whole lot because there's no air contact here. So I put a knife in salsa and let it sit. That's what happened here. About how we're looking. Oh, things did happen. Wait, I was wrong. So I think I got a couple of air pockets in there, which actually did make something happen. Salsa patina, only on one side. Other side looks pretty regular. <laughs> there is a little bit of bluing from the uh, the vinegar that was in there. I spoke too soon. 
<laughs> the salsa patina is the rainbow patina. I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a really thin layer of just the salsa juice, and I'm gonna see how it turns out. I will use my brush for this. And I'll let it sit for another 15 and call her a day. So the salsa knife is just straight up resting. So I'm gonna go rinse this off with some soap and water and hope for a rainbow patina afterwards. All right, so I was losing some faith, but salsa knife actually is turning out looking pretty all right. What I'm gonna do is take some Barkeeper's Friend to try to remove some of the rust without removing the patina. So we're, we're gonna see how that goes. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of Barkeeper's Friend, a little bit of water. Normally I use a wine cork, but today I'm just gonna use a little bit of paper towel because I just want real, real gentle abrasive. Oh no, it's all leaving. So a fun fact about Barkeeper's Friend is the main ingredient is actually made of rhubarb. It's called oxalic acid. It's really good at cleaning pretty much anything from your knife to your sink, bottoms of copper pans. I'm trying to make really even, consistent movements here to try to not disturb the patina too much. Might work, might not, we'll see. It kind of looks like fake Damascus. <laughs> and I think that's just all the texture that we got from the little bits in the salsa. It's a fun result, not one I was totally expecting, and I, don't, I still don't think I would do this at home, but Pretty fun to try. So this one is the grapefruit patina. This one comes from a series of letters and numbers, Olawa 9295. So he says, grapefruit juice left on the carbon steel edge for about 15 minutes at a time leaves a lovely patina. Um, so I think they just leave it lying in the juice after they process a grapefruit. I think I'm just gonna cut this in half and just use the actual juice and give it 15 minutes. Plate. I got my knife. A lot of people on the internet recommend just sticking your knife into some sort of citrus fruit for some amount of time, but they don't really make that big enough for a santoku, so we're doing it this way. I just found out I have a cut on my finger, and then I guess I just leave it for a bit. 15 minutes. Okay, so it's been 15 minutes, and this is how you rust a knife. So we do have a little bit of patina on here, but got a lot of orange and yellow on there and that is rust. So that happens just because we didn't wipe it off quite enough. There was a little bit too much on this knife and I'm going to wash it off with soap and water and get the surface level rust off and hopefully that does leave a little bit of a patina. It is a little bit darker on the edge because the original comment did mention they just used it on the carbon steel edge of their knife, but we'll clean it off and see how it looks. Surface level rust that has just happened is really, really easy to clean off. And most of the time it's not a big deal at all. It does look a little splotchy because most of the patina that happens happens right at the edge of where the liquid is touching the air. So it kind of looks, spotty. I don't think I would do this one intentionally at home to try to force a patina. I would probably use one of the other methods, um, but it is something that will build a patina on your knife if you're just cutting grapefruit in your daily life. But I did get a grapefruit out of it, so I'm happy. One super popular patina method is the onion method. And normally when somebody gets a new knife at our store, we recommend that they do a French onion soup or something with a bunch of veg or a stir fry. Um, but some of our loyal Discord members have been recommending pureeing an onion and then brushing it on the blade and seeing how that works. So that's what we're gonna do. Acidic foods are a great way to build a natural patina on your knife. So just like the grapefruit we did earlier, if you're looking to build a natural patina, doing a lot of onions or citrus kind of things, those will build a patina very quickly. Cool, so I'm just doing a real rough chop here just so that the food processor has a little bit less to do, maybe in like thirds seems like wise. I think I'm just gonna brush it on and keep an eye on it. I think that's what I'm gonna do. Cause when I left it on the salsa, it got a little rusty too fast. So for this one, we're gonna keep an eye on it. This always happens pretty quickly with onions. Even when I'm just cutting onions at home with a knife that doesn't have as much of a patina on it. I'm just gonna keep an eye on this one. I think that's about right. Onion dust. Don't breathe this. All right, so I'm just gonna put some of this puree on here. Probably only really needed like a quarter of this onion if I'm being totally honest, but for videos, you go big or you go home. And now we wait. All right, we're starting to get a little bit of color here, just a little bit of rust where the onion juice has kind of dried up. So I'm gonna scrape this off. 
Oh, that made some fun patterns. You know, I don't hate it. Like, I think this is gonna dry a little bit darker, but honestly, if your choices are between just cutting an onion as you would for dinner normally most nights and like pureeing an onion and then throwing out the onion because you let it sit on your knife for a while, I think I would probably just still use an onion, but it's a thing you can do. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's about what the onion one looks like. This is a really good example of why sometimes a little bit more mirror polish, which is just on the edge of the micro bevel, doesn't show a patina quite as well as the rest of the knife, which is a little bit more smooth and textured. This is the drain cleaner method from a series of letters and numbers that I'm not gonna try to pronounce that says, hey guys, I once opened a bottle of pretty powerful drain cleaner with my carbon steel work knife and it spilt a little bit on my knife and left a very dark patina which is still there to this day. Maybe you could try something like that. So here we are trying something exactly like that. I'm gonna guess this is kind of like etching with the ferric chloride that we did earlier but maybe even just a little bit more corrosive. Uh, so I think we're just gonna rinse it off with some soap and water once we're done straight into the drain where it is meant to be. Uh, and I think I'm gonna brush this on with a cheap brush that I've got here, not leave too much of it on, and uh, see what happens, because this is not a dip situation. I think this is gonna be a brush situation, which might create a little bit more texture, but we'll find out. Kind of flying blind here. I really have no idea how fast this is gonna happen or how this is gonna go. So I'm just trying to be as prepared as possible, and we'll see. Hey, Sky, what'd you do at work today? I'm thinking, okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking a pour on both sides and then a brush, depending on where we're at. That's, that's, that's the approach that we're gonna do. Ooh, that was loud. This is not the color I was expecting. This is a shake before you situation. That is certainly a texture. I really thought it was gonna be like bright purple or something. So I think we're at the weight and then flush part of the experiment. How would you describe the texture of that? I would describe the texture of this as something that would get us demonetized. <laughs> uh, viscous, slightly off-white. <laughs> Just a bit chunky. <laughs> it's not really doing as much as I thought it would. It sure, it certainly smells like drain cleaner, but I'm like, I kind of don't want to put it down because I want to like give it a second. I wanted this to be more. <laughs> How long are we supposed to wait? I know this isn't, this is a knife and not a toilet, but <laughs> just in case there was any confusion or wait. Oh, wait, 15 minutes. Okay. Well, I guess maybe I will put it down. I didn't do shit. We're kind of like gassing up our studio here a little bit, but other than that, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go rinse this off. Maybe when I wash it, something crazy will happen. So this just pitted our knife. It didn't patina it, it just kind of ate little bits into the side of the knife. Wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't try this one at home. I don't think it's worth it. I don't know if we got the wrong kind of drain cleaner. I looked at the ingredients in most of them and for what we had here at Canadian Superstore, that was pretty much it. So if it's a different kind, please let me know in the comments and I will be happy to try it again. Yeah, this just ate holes into it. <laughs> Sorry, Munatoshi. So overall, I think we got some really interesting results. I'm gonna recap them all really quick and then we'll kind of talk about a couple of favorites here. But for bacon, I was pretty underwhelmed. Like I mentioned, I really wanted more out of that. I wanted more of the bluing kind of vibe. I think if you're wanting to do a meat patina, I would go with the steak method, which actually worked really well and did get a really pretty blue look. It's not super consistent, but if you're looking to build a quick natural patina, I would do the cheap steak method and feed it to your dog, very important. Um, next up, boiling vinegar. I don't notice that this was that much different from just dip it, dipping it in already boiled vinegar. I think it's a fine method. I didn't find it to be very consistent, but that could have been the way I wiped it as well. And because there's a lot of little bubbles that happen as it's boiling, I think that was also a factor in getting not as even of a look overall. It did come with some cool colors, so if you're into that, try it out. Uh, pureed onion actually turned out pretty neat looking. I would still just use onions in your dinner and just live with it that way, but if you're looking for a little bit of fun texture, it's kind of an interesting thing to try. And onions are pretty cheap, so maybe give it a shot. I would give this one like a five out of 10. Grapefruit and acidic things in general, this is the stuff that we normally warn you away from because they're gonna rust your knife pretty quickly. It will do that. It'll also build a little bit of a patina, but I don't find it significantly builds a patina better than any of the other methods that we tried. So maybe just continue using and washing your knife and you'll get similar results. 
Salsa was okay. Salsa kind of gives the same texture as the pureed onion, but a little bit more kind of brown and rusty looking because I noticed like tomatoes and onions tend to make a browner patina because they're in kind of the vegetable world. Fun to try. I don't find anything super special about it, but you know. Ferric chloride and the drain cleaner were really interesting side-by-side -side experiments because these were definitely the most corrosive ones that we used. But whereas the ferric chloride is something that knife makers and even people working with electronics use a lot for etching different types of metal. This one is tried and true. It's very popular. I did get a more even coating once I tried it again. But the drain cleaner, I don't know if I just got the wrong kind, but it just pitted the knife and didn't patina it at all, which is a little bit of a bummer, but now we know. And I tried it and wrecked this knife, so you don't have to try it and wreck yours. So maybe a win. Coffee and Coke were really interesting. We got a really similar color for the both of these, but just a little bit different results. So. For coffee, if you've got 24 hours, you can get a really even and dark finish on your knife. And it's still one of my favorite methods to patina a knife with. Coke got really similar results to coffee in a 24th of the time. So if you're short on time and you don't mind the little bubbles that it leaves in the finish, I would try Coke. I think I have three winners for this video. The first one is the steak method, just because it makes a really pretty color and it's not so, into the science experiment realm that it's gonna mess up your, your dinner. You can kind of throw it in on the side as you're prepping things. And it's just nice. It builds a really natural looking patina. Um, I also really like the ferric chloride. I always like the, the acid etching look. It makes a patina that doesn't just look used, it looks old. Like it looks like it has history and I think that's kind of cool. Uh, it also makes a really dark coarse steel, which is pretty interesting as well. And coffee. Coffee has been really tried and true and is a really great even overall look. So if you do have something like Karochi finish on your knife, it plays really well with the existing finish. Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. Let me know if I did something wrong or if I didn't try something that you want me to try. Maybe we'll be stupid enough to make part three. If you are interested in buying any of these pre patina knives, they will be available for purchase in the spring garage sale, which is May 13th the 20th. Hope to see you there. I keep getting the stinky videos. Have you ever seen that video of like a mouse dissolving in Mountain Dew? You fan me right round, baby, right round like a breath of face. Gotta send my husband a picture. He'll never believe I got this seer. It's for you. <laughs> Your dinner's ready. I think I want more juice and less chunk. <laughs> when the onion's not juicy enough. Watch this have like a child safe lock on it that I just can't. <laughs> I'm Sky and I fuck knives up with weird shit. <laughs>